All right, IBAASL2, you made it through semester one. Congrats. Um, today we're going to be getting back to derivatives. Uh, emphasis on the back because we're going backwards with derivatives. So first semester was all, here's a function, tell me what the derivative is. Now, uh, today is going to be, here's the derivative, tell me what the function is. So working backwards. Before we get to any like hard and fast rules about this type of stuff, I want you guys to just start thinking about if the derivative of a function, just some function, was 4x minus 1, could we work backwards to figure out what the original function is? Well, if we think back to our um, power rule of like where you drop the power down out in front and then drop the power down by 1, um, that means that this number, well, right now, uh, the power on the x is a 1. But because derivatives always drop down by 1, that means it must have started as a 2. So if I start to build this up, I think, well, it started out with an x squared something. But when I bring that power out in front, it has to multiply times whatever's in front of it. So to be able to get a 4 coefficient in front of it, I'm thinking there had to be a 2 in front of that. So then when you take the derivative of just this part, the 2 would come out in front and multiply with that 2 and uh, it would make a four. And then you drop the two down by one. So yes, you'd get four X to the one, just for that part. Now, if we zoom in on this part right here, um, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Um, just this part, um, the negative one. Remember that if you take the derivative of something and it's just a number, that it started out as that number times X. Like when you have like, the derivative of 5x, and you, well, if you take the derivative of 5x, it's just 5, it's just the coefficient. So this was just the coefficient on x. So one possible derivative is that, or the original function, f of x could have been 2x squared minus x. But remember, if you take the derivative of just a number, like on the end of a function, that just goes away. It like goes to zero. So this is not the only derivative, or this is not the only original function that gives you a derivative of 4x minus 1. It could have also been 2x squared minus x plus 5. Because then when you take the derivative of this, like the power comes out in front... Uh, the derivative of negative x is just negative 1, and then this part just goes away. So, really, I could put anything I want on the end. It could be 2x squared minus x uh, plus 117 or something like that. So, whenever you're taking the derivative, like this part, this number here on the end always goes away. So, it's kind of impossible to tell... Uh, what that number was because there's no evidence of it anymore. So um, what we do when we're taking a, an antiderivative, oh yeah, we're gonna start using that word in a second, is you say, well, I know for a fact that it, it, it's 2x squared minus x, but then on the end, there's just a plus c. So this c is just some coefficient. And we don't know what it is. I feel like I spelled coefficient wrong up there somewhere. Yep, right here. Spelled it wrong. Um, so you just say that it's plus C. I don't, we don't know what it is, but it, it, it could have had something on the end. So we got to account for it. Here's the big rule for um, like the opposite of a derivative power rule. Uh, first up, when we're working backwards like this, uh, they're called antiderivatives. So if I tell you to, you know, if something is the derivative of something and work back to the original function, you're finding the antiderivative. Um, your book uses a capital F for some antiderivatives, but then they kind of actually ditch it real quick for the real antiderivative sign. But uh, they do use that capital F. If you have a function x to the n and you're going to find the antiderivative of that, which means you just pretend this is the derivative. And you have to go backwards. Then the antiderivative is 
1 over n plus 1 times x to the power of n plus 1 plus c. And I'll do some examples with you guys where this makes sense. Oh, also, it's worthy to note that n cannot be negative 1. That's actually a special situation that we are going to cover later in this session. Um, also notice there's always a plus c on the end. It's an arbitrary constant because when you take the derivative of c, the derivative of c is just 0, so it goes away. All right, let's take it for a test drive. If you're going to find the derivative, the antiderivative, excuse me, the antiderivative of f of x equals x plus 8, I realize that there's no prime symbol right here denoting that this is a derivative, but if they're asking you to find the antiderivative, you just pretend this is a derivative and work backwards. So applying the rule that I just gave you guys, capital F of x, which is an antiderivative notation, is going to be 1 over n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1. So this is always this is going to be 1 ninth x to the ninth. That is the antiderivative. Now, if you if that's confusing about whether or not you got the right answer, you can always take the derivative of this to see if you got will get back the original, which is x over 8. So if you were to take the derivative of that, you know, to do f prime of x, uh, the 9 would come out in front and multiply. So it would be 1 9th times 9 x to the 9 minus 1. And then the 1 9th times 9 cancel each other out. So you do get x to the 8th, which means that it works. Next problem, uh, just like in first semester, uh, anytime you had an x in the denominator, uh, you should throw it back upstairs before you do any derivative work. So this we're going to call x to the negative 3. Then to find capital F of x, which is the antiderivative, it's 1 over negative 3 plus 1 x to the negative 3 plus 1. Remember, you're always adding 1 onto the power because with derivatives, you're always taking a power off of it. You're subtracting it by 1. So the antiderivative, you do the opposite. Um, if we clean this up, this is negative 1 half x to the negative 2. Once again, in my head, I always do a quick derivative on this to see if I get back the original function. So I think if you take the negative 2 and bring it out in front, negative 2 times negative 1 half cancels out to just a 1, and then you drop the power down by 1, so you would get x to the negative 3. It works. The rule works. This last one, uh, you need to rewrite this as x to the 3 fifths before you can do any derivative. So x to the 3 fifths is the same thing as the fifth root of x cubed. So the antiderivative is going to be 1 over 3 fifths plus 1 times x to the 3 fifths plus 1. Now, 3 fifths plus 1, you could use a calculator if you want, but really common denominator works. It's like 3 fifths plus 5 fifths, so you get 8 fifths. So this is 1 over 8 fifths x to the 8 fifths. Then, if you ever have a fraction divided by a fraction, you need to flip the bottom fraction upside down and multiply by it. <coughs> Excuse me. So the antiderivative, final answer, is going to be 5 eighths x to the 8 fifths. If you want to check to make sure that's the right answer, you should take the derivative of this. So if you think of the 8 fifths coming out in front, 8 fifths times 5 eighths cancels out to give you 1. And then when you subtract a whole 1 off of 8 fifths, you get 3 fifths, which is the same thing as this. It works. So, um, truth be told, when I first saw that they were using cap capital F for an antiderivative, I was like, what? Why are they doing that? Because everybody knows the symbol for an antiderivative uh, is also called uh, an integral or an integration. Anti-differentiation is the same thing as indefinite integration. The symbol for integration is this long stretched out S. 
If you see that in front of something, you're finding an antiderivative, which is called integrating. You're finding an integral. Or, yeah, it's the integral symbol. So, for example, if I was to find this, they're asking, this basically means uh, find, sorry, let me keep up in my book where we're at here. Um, sorry, I want to tell you guys some notation here, or some uh, vocab, that's what I'm searching for. Uh, this part right here is called the integrand. And then this part right here, this is the variable of integration. Um, that's what you're taking your uh, antiderivative with respect to. You're differentiating, uh, anti-differentiating x. So what this whole thing means is basically just find the antiderivative of x to the 8th, which you can figure out by uh, doing a, the little rule that they give you, which is, you know, 1 over 8 plus 1 times x to the 8 plus 1. And so this whole thing is... 1 ninth x to the ninth. Oh, and I forgot. Oh my gosh, have I been doing it on every single one? Jolly. You guys, the whole point of me going through that thing in the beginning is that all of these answers have to have a plus C on the end. That's the whole reason we did this is because there can all there always has to be a plus C on the end. So we need to change all of these answers. This has to have a plus C on the end. This has to have a plus C on the end. So here's answer. This is an answer. And then this one also will have to have a plus C. Oh, no, sorry. The simple, final simplified version. Plus C. Got caught slipping. So when I take the derivative or the antiderivative of x to the 8th, it's going to be 1 ninth x to the ninth plus c is your final answer. In general, this just means taking the antiderivative of f of x with respect to x. And then it's the antiderivative, which is cap capital F. And you always have to do your constant of integration, the plus c on the end. Here's a big table of uh, derivative rules side by side with integration rules. The first one uh, you guys know is the power rule, which is um, anytime you see this d over dx, this just means taking the derivative of. So I guess we can make a note of that. Taking derivative. Uh, so if you take the derivative of x to the n, we all know that is the power rule where the n comes out in front and then you drop it down one. So it's n x to the n minus one. The opposite of that is the integration power rule, which is the one over n plus one and then x to the power of n plus one. Don't forget your plus c. The constant multiple, well, first of all, all of these rules look very complicated, but they're not. They're just like general complicated notation ways of saying very simple things. Like if I showed you examples, you'll be like, oh, yeah, totally. I know that. Um, this first one, if you're, diff if you're taking the derivative of k f of x, you really just let the k hang out in front and then you take the derivative of f of x. It's the same version over here with integration, that if there's a constant multiple in front of something you're trying to different or anti-differentiate, then you can picture the k just hanging out in front and just take the antiderivative of the function part. Same thing with the summer difference formula. Uh, like if you're taking the derivative of x to the 8th plus 5x squared or something like that, you just take the derivative of the two separate pieces separately. Um, integration works the same way, where if you have two functions being integrated, you just take the, the integral or the antiderivative. Sorry, I'm going to use those terms interchangeably because they're the same thing. Antiderivative, integrating. Um, you just you integrate them separately and add them together. 
Um, we also learned if you take the derivative of just a number, like the derivative of five is zero. Um, the version, the integration version of that is if you're integrating K is you bump it up to like having an X in front of it. And then don't forget your constant of multiplication or a constant of integration. <laughs> More examples. Okay, all of these have that integration symbol in front of them, which just means um, find to integrate, find the antiderivative, however you want to say it, go backwards because you're looking at the derivatives. They want the antiderivative. So this first one would be 1 over 7 plus, oops, 7 plus 1 times x to the 7 plus 1. Don't forget that plus c on the end. I'm not going to get caught again, you guys. 1 eighth x to the eighth plus c there it is this next one the antiderivative of 6du well first of all uh, notice that this is not an x and that means that that is going to be the variable we're differentiating with respect to so if something uh if you took the in derivative of something and wound up with just six uh that means that this had to start as six not six x but six u plus c. 2x to the third. Um, you really just let the two hang out in front and deal with the x to the third dx uh, integration. So then you run your power rule on it and say this is going to be 1 over 3 plus 1, so this is times uh, x to the 3 plus 1 plus c on the end. So this equals... 2 fourths x to the fourth plus c. So this is 1 half x to the fourth plus c. Um, this one, you really just take the integral or integrate or anti-differentiate, however you want to say it, of all of these pieces. So we're going to treat each of these separately. So the first one would be 1 over 4 plus 1 times t to the 3 plus nope jolly what are you doing it'll be 4 times 1 over 3 plus 1 times t to the 3 plus 1 then the next chunk will be 6 times 1 over 2 plus 1 times t to the 2 plus 1 and then the last part will be plus 3t plus c so now we need to resolve all this or just simplify. Uh, 4 times 1 over 4 is just 1. So this is t to the 4th. Uh, 6 times 1 over 3 is 2. So this is 2t to the 3rd plus 3t plus c. Number done. Remember that if you're unsure, always do like a quick derivative in your head of this to make sure that you get back this using the power rule. Four comes out in front, drop it down one, three comes out, multiplies with the two, drop it down one. Yes, it works. Um, this one, we're going to split into two separate integrals. So this will be x uh, integrating x squared dx and then integrating x to the one half power dx. Notice that I changed that to a one half, any square root needs to become a, a fractional exponent. So this will be, gosh, can I just jump straight to one over three x to the third? And then this one will be, yeah, maybe I won't jump. I'll say it's one over one half plus one times x to the one half plus one, and then a plus c on the end. So one third x cubed. Uh, one half plus one, one half plus two halves is three halves, but then turn it upside down and we get two thirds X to the three halves plus C. Now you remember back to derivatives when we, I told you guys how to find the derivative of natural log and E to the X. The derivative of natural log is just one over X and the derivative of E to the X is just E to the X. It is itself. So it, remember that we can work backwards with these. So if you're taking the antiderivative of 
1 over x, that that's the natural log of absolute value of x. I'm not going to go into it uh, about why, but you do need to put these absolute values when um, doing an integral. And don't forget your plus c, always on the end, forever, forever plus c, all the time. And then this one's the freebie, e to the x, uh, dx is just e to the x plus c. Let's take it for a little bit of a test drive. Um, this problem here is the same as the 3 coming outside and then the deriv or the antiderivative of 1 over x dx, which means that this is 3 natural log absolute value of x plus c. This guy, you can picture the 1 over 5 being outside and then just uh, differentiate anti-differentiating ex uh, dx, and then it's just the same thing. So kind of a boring example because this will be e to the x over 5 again. Don't forget that plus c on the end every single time. Um, this one is almost, I mean... There's going to be rules down the road for like sort of a, a chain and a backwards chain situation, but you can always expand this before you do any integration. So let's keep the integral where it's at and just foil that inside. So it'll be 2x squared plus 3 times itself, which is 4x squared. 6 and 6 is 12, so plus 12x plus 9 dx. And it's like this. So then you can just do each piece separately. So this will be 4 times 1 over 2 plus 1 x to the 2 plus 1. And then this will be plus 12 times 1 over 1 plus 1 x to the 1 plus 1. And then this will be plus 9x plus c. Clean up on aisle 6. Uh, we get 2x cubed plus 6x squared plus 9x plus c. Is that what the book got? Wait, am I on the right problem? <laughs> Did I make a mistake somewhere? I did. I did make a mistake. Okay. You guys, uh, I'm too deep to re-record. I think when I foiled, yep, it's right here. There's a problem. That that should have been an x to the fourth power. Yeah, because you add their powers. Which means that here and here, this should have been a four and a four. So that's going to change this and this into a x, I think just x to the fifth? No. Four fifths x to the fifth. Plus Oh, and then I, I gosh, man, I made two mistakes, you guys. Uh, that means the middle uh, power is also going to be two. I, I really apologize. So this will be 2, 2, 12 divided by 3 is 4, and then this will be x cubed. Then we got it. Sorry about that. I foiled wrong. Foiled again, you guys. Okay, um, this is another one where you're like, well, do I use some sort of quotient rule? No, really, you just... <clears throat> need to do some algebra cleanup before you even think about anti-differentiating. So if we split this into 4x squared over x plus 2x over x plus 3 over x dx, and then simplify again, this will be uh, 4x plus 2 plus 3 over x. So then it's uh, 4 times 1 over 1 plus 1, x to the 1 plus 1, plus 2x. And then this is like, uh, this this part right here 
is like 3 times 1 over x. And remember that the integral of 1 over x is natural log. So this will become plus 3 natural log of x plus c on the end. So let's clean up. This will be 2x squared plus 2x plus 3 natty logs of x plus c. Yep. This one is another one that looks really complicated, but the theme with these last three problems is just simplify the inside before you do any integration. Uh, remember that if you have a power on a, on a log, that power can come out front. And then this will be natural log of E dt. But then natural log of E is just 1, because E to the 1 power is E. So this whole thing is really just di differentiating 4t dt, which is 4 times 1 half, sorry, I'm skipping steps, 1 plus 1, t to the 1 plus 1, and plus c on the end, which is 2t squared plus c. That's it. All right, you guys, really kicking it off on day one. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely spin our wheels and do some practice with this stuff, but I want to get a lot of tools on the table for you guys today. Good luck. Ask me questions in class.